Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this Badass Imperial Fist with 100% dry brushing on his power armor. Welcome to a super special Artist Opus video. We are back to 100% dry brushing on this guy. This power armor turned out amazingly. Super, super interesting, lots of different stages in there. Um, I'd say this is kind of a an intermediate level one. It's not like a fast get them on the table one. If you would like to swap out any of the colors from any of our tutorials, this case for all of them, but it's specifically, especially for this one, just swap them out. If you want to change our base coat of Avalanche for an orange, or you want to like use a different wash or a contrast paint, it's the steps that you go through and the overall idea that's important. So um, absolutely just feel free to do any of that. You can edge highlight at the end of this, you do a load of weathering, do whatever you like. It's an, a flexible technique. And the idea is that you can just take these tools and we should arm you to do whatever it is you wash, whatever you can imagine, basically. If you can give us a suggestion in the comments, you'll be in with a chance of winning one of our texture palettes, whichever one you like, you can ruin it like I do. Look at that. They're uh, absolutely fine. We get lots of questions about what you do when they get too painty. You just prime them and you go again. I really like working over black primed ones, but our camera doesn't like focusing on them. So personally, I find that they're great to work against and it's really relaxing for your eyes because your model jumps out in terms of it and uh, it stops from getting concentration headaches and stuff as much. So give us a suggestion down below. Anything that gets overwhelmingly requested will jump straight up in terms of our priorities for future videos. So without further ado, let's get involved. Let's get painting. Right, so we have our gorgeous new texture palette that's been made especially for me and I can't bring myself to paint on top of. And um, we have our primed guy. I've left his head separate and I've also not glued the arms or the backpack. Um, this is helpful because it's gonna allow me to get to certain areas possibly. And there's no downside to not doing this. The push fit stuff is fantastic. So we've got our guy in little bits and we have our intended color spectrum. Let's see if I can make good on that. That's my guess. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so I have a mix of Leviathan Blue and Zerus Purple for my base coat. I've got one of the oldest larges that I have. It's got a little bit shorter. I like to use this one for base coating and stippling now mainly. Let's rock on. So normally if I was going to be mixing something wet in with a base coat, it would be an ink, but a uh, Leviathan Blue is such an incredibly strong contrast paint. I view it more, more as an ink than a contrast. Uh, so that's going to help us out with the base coating. If you are stippling this base coat, obviously you can airbrush it if you wish, um, and you haven't done this before, it's very easy. You're just always going at the model. You can wipe it around a little bit and stuff like that, but essentially the stippling is gonna help you get in the recesses and just help you lay a base coat down nice and fast. Okay, so our next step is to use a bit of Avalon Sunset. I'm gonna use uh, my wash brush, which has definitely seen better days. This is my scooping brush. Now, because of the color of our base coat, which is a purple, um, it's gonna be a little bit uh, full on to transition entirely from this uh, purple that we started with to the yellow. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of the purple in, which because it's a strong color will have an immediately obvious effect. And that is gonna be our color that we use for base coating. So with all of this stuff, I'm gonna be starting from above. And I'm trying to base coat the majority of areas with stippling, with dry brushing. Uh, but towards the bottom of panels, as you can see on this shoulder pad, I'm not too fussed if I leave some of the purple showing through. So I'm gonna be taking this approach to the entirety of the model. And you can use stippling as I did there, or as I'm gonna show you here, you can absolutely use dry brushing. Um, you want to make sure though, however, especially if you are using the dry brushing rather than the stippling, that everywhere gets a base coat of the color. Um, don't be afraid to make your paint a little bit more wet uh, for this stage. It will make it slightly transparent, so maybe you have to do a couple of quick coats, but that's not an issue and it'll make sure that you get decent coverage over the entirety of the model. So as we can see, we're building up the layers here and basically we're just going to be using pure Avaland at this point. We've not completely cleaned our brush so we still have some residue from the previous previous stage there and approaching it more from a top-down perspective
bearing the angle in mind and bearing shadows and overflow and stuff like that, we're going to start hitting our model. So here, for example, in this rounded section, I'm more concerned with hitting that from the top than I am from the bottom. And with the areas below, if I get them like this, then I'm gonna have the, uh, the undersides darker than the top sides. And we'll be taking this approach all over the model. So on the back of his leg or whatever, start there. Start where you'd like it the heaviest. This is heavy dry brushing, I would describe it as. And then on the underside, perhaps leave a little bit more. All right, a bit of a close up, just to give you a better idea of exactly what it is that I'm looking to achieve here. So we've got a small amount of our purple on the brush. You're basically applying a powder here. Don't worry if it doesn't look mega subtle because we're gonna be going over the yellow with a brighter yellow and then kind of a bony yellow highlight as it is. But all of these sections, you can add so much more visual interest and suggestion of shape and volume and shading and that type of stuff. Pull him off his base for now. Anything that seems too heavy handed, you can just rock in with their finger and sort it out. And if you feel like you've got a little bit too much on your brush, go to your dampening pad, um, dilute it a little bit more, and then you can step back in without worrying about what you're gonna be putting on your model. So I'm gonna go all over the model doing this uh, quite fast. I'm not looking to be like crazy precise or anything, but I'm just following the recesses, the dark areas, and the areas pointing downwards instead of upwards. Uh, if you go over the edges, really don't worry about it. We will obscure all of that in the next step. Okay, so this mix is simply a tiny amount of Leviathan Blue. I'd recommend use a purple in that place though and then some Xerus Purple and Lamium Medium and a bit of water. So what I'm doing here is it's going to go all over the model and we're going to make sure that it's not too thick in any one location. But the main purpose of this is to shade panels a little and then also just be largely concentrated in the release in the recesses. However, we're trying to echo what we've done with our painting with the previous purple stage. So uh, you, you can't do much to control gravity, obviously, but uh, I'm going to try and finish my strokes in the areas of the models which I want to be the most purple. Okay, so with our Lamium Medium, Leviathan Blue, Xero's Purple and Water Mix, the approach I'm taking to areas such as the head is to put on a little bit more that I need. You've got to work fast to do this, but they don't dry too quick, so you have some flexibility. Take a clean brush and then we use this as basically an eraser. So anywhere where we don't want this paint, this wash, this mix, we can remove it, ending our stroke where we want, where we do want there to be paint. So I'll start here where I want it to be clean and then I'll end my lift off point is gonna be in that recess and that will help me redistribute the paint. I want a bit of shading down this air vent, mohawk, whatever, but I don't want as much. So I'll pull the wash down a little and it actually gives you far more control than you would imagine. Try and get some focus here. This also helps you fix things. So if we've obscured some panel lining we want there, we can push our paint up to the top and fix that. It's an amazing technique, super flexible. And if you want to do a version of this where it goes towards the recesses more, all you do is you spray varnish the model before doing this step. Nice and easy. Okay, so I've added in a tiny bit of flesh tear as red. And what I've done is I've just gone and specifically right in the middle of all of the dark bits, I've um, hit it with a second step. And then if anything looks too unsubtle, I've faded it down. We are slowing down at this stage. We're gonna be doing kind of gentle buffing work. And we're gonna be doing a, a bit of stippling, but mostly it's gonna be dry brushing. And taking our time here is gonna help us kind of build up nice, interesting volumes, hit those edges, especially the ones that we've turned purple. Um, so if you can see here on this shoulder pad, 
already getting some nice crisp edge highlights and all that work that looked messy before, we're doing a really, really good job of countering. So take your time here, all over the entirety of the model. Goes without saying, we start our strokes at the top where we want things to be brightest and then at the point at which we're happy with how much paint is on the brush and how it's behaving, we go down to the other areas. Um, we're at the stage where we don't want to build up too much more texture on the model, so I'm really going to take care um, to make sure that my paint is thinned, being my, uh, my brush is not uh, caked with dry paint I'm using the dampening pad, and I'm making sure there's not too much on there. And that's going to allow us to do what we need to do without making the model look dry or ruining any of the edges or highlighted sections that we've spent all that time building up. So again, slow and steady. It's going to happen pretty fast. There's no need to rush it beyond its natural speed. And any of these edges on the shoulder pads or areas like this, make sure that you are going across the details, not up and down them. You want to hit any lines. If there's a line this way, you want to be passing across it left and right. So for example, up and down on the outlet ports of his backpack or whatever they are. This all over the model, take your time, no rush, and we should start seeing it looking to be far closer to finished. Okay, so we've got our screaming skull here. We are very carefully gonna apply it to our model, mixing it in with our flash kits yellow. Now this is significantly brighter than anything else we have on the model, so we're gonna be using extremely delicate directional kind of buffing and uh, kind of a, a, the dry brush equivalent of edge highlighting. Any areas that are on the top of the domed sections, we can hit carefully to suggest light sources and then edges we've got, make sure you're going directly against them and uh, proceed with care of the model. It should land pretty easily because it is so distinctly different from everything else we've got on the model so far, but um, this will pretty much finish off the yellow. So hit it all over and um, take a fair bit of care. This is a, a magical step as far as the final, the final paint job goes. And once you've done it with uh, the mix, you can add in a little bit more of the screaming skull and just maybe hit the central parts of each of the edges that you hit with the previous stage and then you've got a highlight within your highlight. Okay, so we have detailing to go. I'm gonna keep things fairly simple and pretty much all of the sections are gonna be hit with these colors. Uh, so black uh, with iron breaker over the top because the silver goes better over a black base coat. And they're gonna be hit with these colors and a wash and then a repeat of the colors. So we're keeping it pretty simple and crisp and we'll let the yellow do the talking as far as the model's concerned. Right, so um, as we've gone through that uh, in bits and bobs, I wanted to talk about a couple of processes I've used. So. Uh, number one, the wash I use for the metal and black areas was a mix of these two. That worked really well. Um, Screaming Skull uh, was the base coat for the white sections on his insignia on his chest. And then we moved up through Ulthuan Grey and White Scar. Um, Ulthuan Grey and White Scar on top of a first heavier dry brush with a tiny little extra small is what we used to put down the foundations on these sections here. As you can see in the background, I uh, checked out this for inspiration. So they've all gone together really nicely. We've washed everything with the same mix and then we've just got a couple of Mephiston red areas. So we're ready to pop them back together. It was really super useful to have these parts not glued, so I'd recommend it thoroughly. And uh, then we're pretty much done. All right, so this guy turned out awesomely. Um, You'll know that I've chosen a like a kind of a warm base for him. You could base for contrast. There we go, that's better, look at that. You base for contrast or cohesion. I've gone for cohesion here, but you could absolutely use cool basing 
like the basing that I used on that Ultramarine from our previous video, and it looked really good as well. Uh, it doesn't matter, you could go either way. And of course, you put a skull on everything because it's the Games Workshop world. Uh, so, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as I stressed at the beginning of the video, if you want to swap out any of the colours in any of our tutorials, just feel free to mix it about. If you want to start with a bright orange, you want to like use a different wash, you want to wash it all with like a crimson or a deep purple or anything like that, all of those will work, all of them will be viable. You just start with cool colours, there on your recesses, you finish with crisp, bright, warm colours, there on your highlights, done. That's it. You can do whatever you like in the middle, just follow the process through and you should enjoy every step. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, just to stress it, um, put a comment and a suggestion below. We love you getting involved and we will enter you with a chance to win a texture palette, a set of your choosing, and we'll probably check in a couple of brushes as well. So thank you very, very much for your support. Please like, comment and subscribe and let us know what you'd like to see from the rest of the Indominus box.